There we go. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets, episode number 17. And clearly today, I have someone here much better looking than anybody's ever appeared on the show. Because it's usually <laughs> just been either me or William and I. Oh, and this nice. is my wife, Kelly. Uh, Hi, everyone. This is Kelly Altman, in case uh, most of you guys know her. But those that, that don't, uh, please say hi to Kelly. And uh, we're going to get started. So we're going to use a similar format today in the show. In that we're going to do five questions in five minutes. The only thing that's going to be different about today's show is instead of me answering most questions, Kelly is going to answer most of these questions. So we're going to do uh, five questions in five minutes. We're going to follow that by two ab exercises in our uh, series here. So this is four out of the fourth session out of five uh, series on the uh, abs to gain more function and to help you with to gain six pack abs. And then we're going to go into a longer question that Kelly's going to go deeper on. And then we'll say, say goodbye to uh, our Altman Fitness public facing page and we're gonna spend then another 15 minutes for just our members only answering one more question. So uh, that said, before we get started today, I would like for you to do me a favor. If during our, the Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets episode today, if you get anything of value today, I would like for you to like and share this um, Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets episode, please. Yeah. So that said, I want to tell you about what Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets is in case this is your first time and to remind you if you are a repeat visitor. So the big question is this, how do we lose weight while still feeling great without cheating by taking dangerous supplements, drugs, or undergoing surgeries that could really hurt us? And how do we sort through all the confusing information out there when it comes to how to eat and exercise to lose weight? So that's the big question. This Fitness and Fat Loss Secrets Facebook Live will give you those answers. If you have a question that we're not addressing, I would like you just to just ask it in the comment section below. We'll either answer that question live or I'll answer it to you in the comment section as a reply back to you, okay? So that said, let's get started with our five questions in five minutes. So each one of these are just meant to have a shorter answer so we can plow through these uh, quickly, okay? So the first question is this. So I thought, uh, here we are in the holiday season, and so, and a lot of parties come up. So what would you advise somebody, or how would you advise yourself, what do you do when it comes to all these holiday parties and how to manage so that you don't gain a bunch of weight? Yes. Okay, good, good question. And I know a lot of people, um, you know, maybe in the past have, had a lot of things on their plate and maybe these are things that are recurring every single year or they're parties that they don't really know what to expect when they get there. Um, so there's you know kind of two different scenarios. And I would say that the most important thing to do when you um, are you know, thinking about that party is to you know, set your intention. Be very clear, first of all, about what it is you want, um, what is going to be there, what you're really going to focus on when you go to that party. Um, if the food is something that is amazing, something that you can't really get anywhere else, something that you really look forward to, something that you can't ever have at other times of the year, and maybe it's um, catered by one of your very favorite restaurants, is to choose those parties to be the ones that you indulge maybe a little bit in some foods that you may normally not, and make a plan during the day to kind of um, counterbalance you know, what you may be eating at that party but to 100% look to those times and plan ahead as to those times that you have parties that you're going to where it's the same old stuff. Stuff that is not very exciting, stuff that is not super delicious and not your very favorite things and not things that are going to make you feel really amazing. So I think it's all about setting your intentions before you go into that party, realizing that if you go into a party completely starving, you're going to make poor choices. And so to always have a snack before you go, something that fills you up with a little bit of protein, vegetables, a little bit of fat, and you can make better choices during that party. Does that awesome. answer your question? It does, and it answered, but one thing I have to remind you, we do five and five. 
So it's really quick. Yeah, so you gotta be a little quicker. That was a fantastic answer. I've never been known to nope. talk too much. <laughs> but we have to do this a little never. faster. So, okay. it, but, but this, this leads me to the very next question though, because I think, uh, you know, me included, most of you out there also like to drink. So okay. how, if I wanna drink during this time of the year, and drinking opportunities come up more often, usually, whether it's dinner parties out, or these holiday parties, or mm -hmm. whatever else, could be birthdays, like your birthday was last weekend. So uh, how do I fit drinking in without gaining weight during this time? Okay, really good question. So again, it's about setting your intention. Do you want to drink, but do you also want to feel good the next day? And coming up with what is your, um, what does that mean? What is, what is your limit? I know for me, if I go and have more than two drinks in a night, I feel terrible the next day. And so stay, staying clear to what your actual goal is. If your goal is to feel healthy and also indulge, then doing that just in moderation and being clear on why. It's not because you're depriving yourself, it's because you're actually giving yourself the opportunity to just feel really good each day. And always alternate your alcoholic drinks with water. Drink awesome water, tip. Water. Cool. Now, um, so that says, so we've kind of have dealt with parties, we've dealt with drinking, but Kelly, it's so stressful during this time. Uh, Do you have any tips that you use for yourself that you could pass along to anybody? It's only stressful stress? during this time, Jay, because you are focused on how stressful it is. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Well, that's, that's sort of the short answer of it, right? We can make the holidays whatever we focus on whatever we choose to focus on. The holidays is really, truly about um, family and love and giving and joy and celebration. And if we focus on all of those things and we all recognize that we have the power to make it whatever we wanna make it. So if we feel like it's too stressful, then we have control to just say no to things that don't serve us. Perfect, love it. All right, great answer. So then the next question is, with all the things that we have committed time toward, the parties, the this and that and the other thing, buying gifts and so on, I don't have time to be healthy. What do you do for yourself or what can you advise to people that say, you know, I just don't have time yeah. to fit in well, I, being healthy? Yeah, I, I, I hear that a lot and I 100% believe that being healthy doesn't take any extra time. Actually being unhealthy takes up a lot of extra time because you don't feel good. You feel um, when you're not eating well, when you're not exercising, you are not creating the, the great energy that comes with exercise and with eating well. And those are the times maybe when you get home from work after having you know lots of processed carbohydrates during the day and candy and junk food that you come home at five o'clock and the weight of the world feels like it's on your shoulders and all you want to do is crash on the couch and not fulfill all these other obligations. So I think the key is, is to keep up with all of those things, realizing that your food is going to give you energy and just by eating better, you will have more energy. Perfect. And then the last question for the five and five is, you know, I have the privilege of obviously living with you and I get a witness how you feel strong and confident in your body. How do you do that and how could anybody else feel strong and confident during this time? Just a quick answer. Um, I think is to recognize that you have the opportunity at every single turn, with every single choice, there's an opportunity to make yourself proud. And when we make ourselves proud, it just sort of snowballs into you know doing something that you said you were going to do. I mean, every day I consider myself, I'm an exerciser. So every day that I go do that thing that I said I was going to do, I get more and more proud. And same yeah. with eating a healthy breakfast or being prepared is just creating that momentum towards feeling proud. I love it. All right, you guys, that concludes our five and five, or about five and five. It's five questions in about five wind, minutes. Then. That's right. And now we're going to move on to our ebb exercises. So if you've been following along, or even if you haven't, I want you to know that we've been doing a series here of ab exercises. And the purpose of these ab exercises are two things. One is to gain function into the belly, and it's to help you to gain six-pack abs. It's to help the nerves connect to the muscles properly, so you can really innervate properly in your belly. And I also have been saying that these exercises are the ones that if you are somebody out there that is currently dealing with a low back, uh, injury or low back pain or shoulder pain or knee pain, 
almost 90, probably 99% of the time, it's because the core, the middle, is not strong enough. So if that's you out there, I want you to really pay attention to these, to these exercises. Or if you're wanting to get six back abs or to lean out through the middle, I want you to pay attention. So that said, we're gonna get down onto the floor. Kelly's gonna be demonstrating the two exercises today. Yeah, so let's go ahead and move down to the floor. And then I wanna to say to you guys, yep, you're just gonna go right down here on the floor. You're gonna lie onto your back so that you're sideways to the camera. And what I wanna to say to you guys, is if you uh, have not been tuned, if you've not tuned into the last few times, you can go back and review. All these Facebook Live episodes are saved. So you can just scroll through the feed and you see the uh, episodes, I believe it started at about 14, 14, 15, 16, today we're at 17. And so the last four, we've demonstrated these ab exercises. So this is four out of five. And today we have two exercises that I'm gonna show you. And before we uh, start, I just wanna remind you or tell you if you're new about the basic premise of how this starts. So you start by laying onto your back. And it starts with, on the very first day, we did an exercise called elevator. And I'm, Kelly, I'm gonna move this way just a little bit to make sure we're in both cameras here. There we go, that's good. Okay, so elevator is simply this. As you're laying down, you're gonna take your fingers and you're gonna push them into your belly. So you can go ahead and do that, Kelly. Push your fingers into your belly. And then you're gonna push your belly up to meet your fingers until you make a strong wall that you can feel. So when you push down into your stomach, you'll feel that you've created a wall. And if you could take that wall and move it all the way up to the top, that would be elevator to elevator level number 10. So picture this like a building, and at the, all the way completely relaxed, you're at zero, you're at ground floor, and all the way to the top, you're at 10. When we're doing these exercises, I want you to do elevator, belly, strong wall, up to about floor seven or eight, okay? And that's where you're gonna maintain it. So that said, today we have two exercises that we're gonna do while maintaining our elevator at seven. And the first one, is a happy baby, extra happy baby with a roll. Now, if you are familiar with yoga, you know the move happy baby. If you're not, don't worry about it. I'm gonna explain it to you right now. So I'm gonna have you put your, um, you can take your shoes off if you want. Uh, and I'm gonna have you put your head in actually this direction so people can see you from this way, okay? So you're gonna do this with us. So get down to the floor if you can. If you can't, do this later. Come back to the video and do this later. So uh, go ahead and bring yourself up into happy baby, which means you're gonna come up, you're gonna grab a hold of your feet, and then you can grab on the inside or you can grab the outsides, either one. And your knees are gonna come to the outside of your body. Now as you do this, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your belly up to level seven. You're gonna hold that. So I wanna make sure Kelly's belly is nice and strong, push up, hold level seven. And then from there, what Kelly's gonna do is while maintaining this, she's gonna roll 10 degrees to her right. So just 10 degrees roll, keep the belly really strong. And then come back, 10 degrees to the left. Keep the belly up, push, 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 push. There we go. And back. And you're gonna keep this going. More right here. And back. Keep going. And so that's it, you guys. You're gonna do that for 40 seconds, and then you're gonna take a break, and then we'll move on to the second exercise. So it's happy baby, which means grabbing the feet. The knees are outside of your, your, uh, your belly there, so that we're keeping the hips in the, the right alignment. Keep the belly tight. Now, when you start rolling, make sure you do not let go when you go to either side. You gotta keep pushing that belly out to make sure you keep the function of that core, okay? Now, the next one is a knee lift. So the hands are gonna go just about down by your sides. Head's laying back. You're gonna bring the belly up to level seven. You're gonna hold that. This time, the knees come up to happy baby position without grabbing them. So knees slightly outside of, of the, the waist here. Belly strong. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna do a knee lift. Now this is more of a feeling than it is actually an action. So you won't actually see anything happen here, maybe just very subtle, and when you do it, you won't see a lot either, but you will really feel it. So the idea is once your knees are up here, belly's tight, you're gonna try to push your knees to the ceiling, and you're gonna do that just nice and controlled. So you're not trying to jerk move it, nice and controlled up, and then slow down, and then up, and down. We're gonna do a couple more of these. So that's your keeping strong. And think about when you beat your knees up, see if you can just really control that down movement. And it's more of a feeling than it is about effort. More of the coordination of the movement than it is about the effort of the movement. And that's enough, all right? Good, so that's it. So that's the two exercises for this week. The happy baby with a 10 degree roll. And then knees up plus a knee lift. So those are the two. So do those, you're gonna do them 40 seconds on and then you're gonna rest for 20 seconds, 
and then you're gonna do 40 seconds of the other exercise, and you're gonna do that for four rounds, okay? So 40 seconds on, 20 seconds rest, for four rounds in a row, okay? So do that, and let us know what you think in the comment section below, but you'll find that uh, you'll really feel your belly working uh, a lot, right? Yeah, it's yes. really subtle, but you can really feel it's it. It's subtle, and when you're paying attention, it's the most effective way to possibly work the abs. So a lot of times people are going through ab exercises, doing crunches or whatever, all the things that come up uh, in your exercise class, whether it's here or elsewhere, but a lot of times you're not even feeling the abs. It's kind of like going through a motion, and then you're kind of feeling it in your back, or you're feeling it in a hip. You're well, I think it really helps to kind of keep your hands kind of pushed in and to feel your abs pushing out on your hands because a Absolutely. lot of people can figure out when they lose it and when they're not feeling it anymore from feeling that contraction. Yep, and if you're unsure, put your hands right into your belly and you'll, you'll know because it's a solid wall when your belly muscles are on and it feels like mush when it's not, okay? That said, we're done with the abs. Now we're moving on to the big question before we say goodbye to our Alban Fitness crowd and move on to just the Alban Bootcamp crowd. And this question is this. Uh, how do you keep yourself, so asking you, how do you keep yourself fit, strong, and healthy? Mm. What are your daily habits or whatever, what comes up for you? Okay, so maybe what are, what are my daily habits? Sure, whatever, whatever comes up, up for you when it, and for the question, what keeps you fit, strong, and healthy? Um, first, first of all, it's probably mostly that desire to to kind of to want that to know that there have been times in my life where I was not fit I was not strong and I certainly was not healthy and to know that to, to remember that that was that was painful and to really keep in keep in mind and be grateful for the opportunity that everybody has to change their direction at any time to choose to be healthy to realize that that truly is a choice to be fit and to be strong and to do those things that move you in a direction and to be grateful for the opportunity every single day to be able to have that choice and so I would say that that's mostly kind of ties into all of the other choices that I would make in a day that when my alarm goes off at 430 that I choose to know that that is because I wanted that because that allows me to lead the life that I want to lead that allows me to inspire others and watch other people on their journey to get strong and fit and healthy and to know 100% that there have been times in my life that I ate in a way that made me feel pretty miserable to make the connections between how the food tastes and how the the emotional connection that we have to food and then realizing how that can create different chemical reactions in our bodies and our brains to make us either have the energy or positive outlook to to keep on going right that that those are pretty much it it feels easy when you're in a routine to do it because you know what things make you feel great and what things make you feel terrible and so you just make a choice, you realize that every single day you have hundreds of choices to make as to which direction you're gonna go. Awesome, love it. Does that answer so, your question? Yeah, 100%, yeah. that's a great answer. Um, so then it leads me to, so things that again, get having the privilege to live with you, I know about you, but I'm just curious, uh, from your standpoint, there's many habits that you have that support you in your journey to be fit, strong, and healthy. Mm -hmm. In your view, for you, what is the most important habit that you do? Honestly, I believe the most, there's kind of two. Okay. There's kind of two. Sure. And the first one, and you know me, and this is, is exercise. It's non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable because it's how I have over the years begun to define myself because I know that it's the thing that changes everything. It changes my outlook. It it brings me those feel good, you know, chemicals in my body that I don't get from anything else, and it, it changes my state. And so, if if that is missing, then I'm not really even the same person. I'm always good for a rest day. Every once in a while, we all sure. need it. But some sort of movement is probably the biggest. Um, and and then the other one is vegetables. Is just realizing how 
nourished you can feel by eating healthy foods because Jay knows this, there are times that I eat non-healthy foods, but I always make sure to include a really good balance of having things that are nourishing my body um, also. And that, that is huge because nothing else gives me more energy. Cool, awesome. Thank you guys. Uh, so that said, we are at the end of the segment for our Altman Fitness group. And then, so we're gonna be saying goodbye. But before we say goodbye, I wanna say this. Uh, first, I wanna say thank you. Uh, for showing up today. Thank you for loving yourself enough to tune in, to listen, to do, to uh, take the time to listen to Kelly's uh, ideas today, to take in the ab exercises, and then most importantly, to that you're implementing, implementing these things, that you love yourself enough to implement something, anything, whether it's a thought or an action that you're implementing. So uh, thank you for doing that. If you got any value at all from today's episode, I would like for you to like and to share. And two, if you're not if you've not come in uh, and you're not currently a member with us, I want to invite you to come in for free. And uh, on the Altman Fitness page, you'll see just below this video, I'll be posting a link to come in for, th with, for three free afterburn workouts. So if you're out there and you're thinking, you know, I, I think I should just do this and you're feeling a little nervous, come in. We're going to make you feel comfortable. We're going to welcome you in. We're going to take care of you. We're not going to let you do too much. And we're, we're gonna help you do just the right amount to get you going or from wherever you are, but then we're gonna help you get that result, okay? So uh, take advantage of that. And until next time, uh, remember, um, take care of yourself and I love you. And we'll see you the next time. Every Wednesday at 1045, we're live to answer your questions. And if you have those questions, ask them below. So bye for now to the Alban Fitness page.